conversations with God for all this pastors. Our faith is what got us through all the troubles and disasters. Indeed, we fell short, but the Lord never passed us. Our belief in God is the most important factor. It's the Velika B Project. You're now tuned in to the Velika B Project with your host, Velika B, lover of God, founder and CEO of Set Apart and Chosen. Sit back and relax and enjoy the conversation. Hello, Facebook family, Instagram, podcast, and radio family. It's your girl, Valika B, founder and CEO of Set Apart and Chosen, and this is the Valika B Project. I'm so excited to have my special guest on tonight, Pastor Thomas and Lady Crystal. We are about to talk about surviving marriages in ministry and also COVID. So I do want to give a, a quick disclaimer. The views and opinions are those of Balika B and my guest on tonight. So bear with me. Let me bring on my special guest. I'm excited, y'all. Hey, Pastor Thomas and Lady Crystal. How are you guys doing tonight? We're great. How are you doing? I'm doing Thank good. You. Blessed and highly favored. Just doing well. Just doing well. well absolutely. <laughs> so let me introduce everyone to you again. This is Pastor Thomas and Lady Crystal. Can you let them know which church you pastor and also the um, the name of the church, the location, and all of that good stuff for me? Absolutely. First of all, we want to say thank you, and we really appreciate you having us on, on this evening. Um, our church is Break the Worship Center, of Hope, as you have already heard. Um, we're located at 6021 Maddox Road in the great city of Morrow, Georgia. Again, at 6021 Maddox Road, Morrow, Georgia. Um, You can give them maybe our website and everything. Okay, sure. Our website is www.bwcoh.org. Again, that is www.bwcoh.org. All right. Well, thank you so much. Let's get into the conversation. Now, um, how long have you been married? We've been married for five years. Beautiful years. <laughs> yes, five years. Like, we just celebrated our, our fifth five-year anniversary, yes. October the 1st. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. That, that's right. I did see that. Congratulations. Yeah. Happy anniversary to Thank you guys. You. Thank you. Now, how long have y'all been in ministry? As a pastor. Minist- as a pastor, um, I started pastoring in 2019. Okay. Yeah, 2019. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've been in ministry a while, but and I never thought I'd be a pastor. <laughs> and um, God just, he called me. I wasn't quick to run. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So how do marriages or how have your marriage survived during COVID and also just ministry all together because you're new, like I'm going to say y'all newlyweds and new into pastoring. So it seemed like a lot of this happened around the same time. So how did then COVID hit, a little nasty stinking COVID hit. So how <laughs> did you guys adjust through newly married, newly ministry and COVID? I think, well, we, we were, I was installed in, what, 2018. I was installed at the end of 2018. So um, at the end of 2018, we were setting up the ministry and everything, and uh, we were actually in a school at that point. And um, it, it was difficult. The transition was kind of difficult as it was. You can go ahead. Well, well like I said, the transition was difficult in itself um, just because, you know, we were – just trying to get used to being a pastor and a first lady um, and assuming our roles. And then COVID hit and everything shut down. And so when everything shut down, it was just like, wow, you know, where do we go from here? Because um, we're like, well, we still have to operate as a ministry and we can no longer, you know, they gave all the mandates. We weren't able to meet face to face anymore, Um, especially because we were um, having services in the school too, like you said. And so, it was like when the school shut down, the services shut down too. And so we're like, so how do we adjust to that? So we had to think of ways to be innovative, um, to create an online presence in order to still continue to operate and 
have, um, you know, our ministry still operating. Right. I, I think it was just, it was really hard um, trying to, you know, create relationships with the members in person as it was, you know what I'm saying? Um, gaining um, trust and, and I'm, a, I'm a new pastor. And uh, so it, even, it it got worse when we had to like do it over, you know, over a computer screen. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, talking to people. And so we, we, we I think we lost um, some of our members at that time. And, uh, and, it, and it really seemed, it, it was kind of gloomy to us at first because I never forget, I, I was sitting in the, in the room one night talking to my wife and said, baby, what are we going to do? I mean, it, out of all the things that can happen, we don't need to be shut down in the middle of us just beginning um, to take over this ministry. So it, it, it was difficult at that, at that particular time. It was very difficult. Yeah, I think it was difficult, but then I think it got us to a place to where during that shutdown to where we had to sit down and take the time, you know, to kind of, it, it kind of created like the shutdown was shutting down, but it caused us to shut down and stop and be still. Right. And in the midst of that, I think it kind of helped us because we were able to communicate um, and learn together, mm-hmm. you know, like what to do through this process. Whereas um, we probably wouldn't have been able to do that. I think it would have been even more stressful for us if we had not had shut down. I know that sounds kind of weird because you're like, well, how can you, you know, how can it be better if you're shutting down, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and you're just new to being a pastor, but I think it kind of, it was stressful initially, but then I think we kind of saw, okay, God is in the midst of this situation still. And so, you know, we were able to come together and work together as a team to get through it. Now, um, were you able to like maintain, I know you said you lost some members. Were you able to maintain the, some of the members and also gain new ones while you were online? Well, let me tell you how God works. Cause just like my wife said, uh, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that perception is everything. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of times, you know, it, we, we run into storms in our life and, and, the only way you, you're going to be able to, to overcome your storm is how you perceive it. So in, in the ministry, when we were going through this, we, we changed our perception. You know, we, we went to God about it and we started looking at it in a different per- perspective. So, yeah, we lost a few members. But when we started thinking of, OK, well, this would be the opportunity now that we're shut down and we can really think of a plan and and, and, and stop and slow down because we were moving so fast, you know, mm-hmm. even when you talk about our marriage at that particular point, we were moving fast. So we, we were busy. Yeah. We, you know, we, <laughs> we have a business, so we were busy doing everything and, and, and it slowed us down. So when we looked at it, it was like, okay, this is good. This is good. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to work this thing. So we lost the members, but we, 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 my wife got a plan to put out there on Facebook because we started using Facebook more. We started using YouTube more. And, and we found that we can we can gain members, whether whether they're in Morrow or where, wherever they may be. Right. So we looked at that as an advantage. So now we can have members of people because it's all about the glory of God. And a lot of people try to attract people to the church walls and they right. were missing it in the first place. Right. Because we were keeping God boxed in to the church when... <laughs> that's not our purpose in the first place. You know, our purpose is to be out of the church, outside of the four walls, out in the community. And so I think this presented an opportunity for us to bring ministry to the people. And not just in our local area. So we took advantage of it. And um, I learned a lot from you. I, I never forget, I used to come to you and ask you all the time, <laughs> come on, Sister Malika, help me out. Give me some <laughs> ideas. I need some some, some, some ideas. And you, were, you, you, get, and you really helped us. And um, we started seeing a difference. We 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 have people that we were reaching and started reaching in Florida and in some in California, some in Texas, and we're now starting to see this. And and it was just a, and the Lord dealt with me on it. He he was like, you know, it's not about the four walls. It's about my glory everywhere and bringing people to um, relationship with me, not just where you're at, but everywhere. So um, it worked out. And in the midst of that, it helped our marriage. Because we had to stop. 
we had to stop and slow down. And yeah. it, it, it allowed us to get to know each other better. Yes, absolutely. I put something, I placed something on, um, I think August 2018, I placed something on Facebook and I said, the new church has no walls. So I'll never forget my pastor. He reached out to me like, what do you mean by this post? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know because it was just laid on me. And he was like, so what are you trying to say, Belika? And I said, the new church has no walls. I said, honestly, if you think about it, you are already doing it anyway, because if you were doing outreach, you were stepping outside of the four walls of the church. And anything that you were doing if it was not inside of the building, it was outside of the four walls. So the new church has no walls. Then all of a sudden this hit. So Pastor right. called me back and he said, You remember that time you said, and I said, You know, I'm crazy. <laughs> but it was like God was warning me, the new church has no walls. So if you're stuck inside of a wall of the church, a church inside of um, Morrow, Georgia is not going to be able to reach anybody in Florida or anybody in Texas. So you got to step outside your comfort zone. And the thing was, the crazy thing was nobody really knew. But I knew I I knew because I stumbled across it so long ago. Mm -hmm. But when I used to tell different churches, say, hey, go to Facebook, go to YouTube, do these different things. Ah, oh, no, we we're good. We get even like my husband's church. I even built I built all of that before I left the church. And so when I left, it just went down. So when things hit as far as trying to receive money online, payments online, um, tithes and offerings online, I'm sorry, or a new way of doing things, a lot of churches went down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They went down. They closed the doors because they didn't know how to honestly move outside of the four walls of the church. And a lot of ministries, especially family ministries, they put their personal investments into the church. So now you got a church that's going down. Right. Now that thing will hit your family pockets. It already hit your family pockets and you think you're going to get recouped back later on. But now all of that, which could have caused a major strain on marriages, Absolutely. And families in general. So kudos to you guys that it didn't happen to you and that, you know, God was, listen, God was doing some major stuff in the, in the midst of all of this. But let me tell you, what I'm thinking, I know we were talking about marriage, but I'm going to go a little higher. I feel like it was a warning from God, the stuff that we were going through. Yes, it was. To me, some pastors and churches. Yes. Y'all feel, not y'all, but they feel bad. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Because their focus got jacked up. Yep. Because that's that's what he was like, get your eyes back on me. Get your eyes back on me. It got worse because we didn't have no other choice, but in some cases to make things as a production. So, yeah, you know, we were getting called up. Ooh, I got these numbers. Or, ooh, the choir doing A, B, and C. Or, did y'all see? Like, did y'all see what they did over there? We got to do better. Uh, our production got to be better. We got to step our game up. Now it's a game, and I felt like, man, y'all fail. Y'all missing, it. It. missing it. Yes, and he, missing and it. And I believe God was very angry, and and it was a wake up call. I never forget when the pandemic hit. Right, no, right before the pandemic hit. I started out the year in January on a series saying it's time to refocus your focus. That was my message. And and, and I told my wife I, and I, I told the church, I said, we're about to run into a, 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 an era, another season where God is going to demand of us to refocus our focus. He's going to make us do it. Yeah. And and I spoke it and I spoke it and that's when all the, all the pandemic started happening. And I, and, and I, I was a firm believer that, listen, God is God is catching our attention for this new season that we're entering in. Absolutely. And if people don't pay attention, if people don't respond the way God is trying to get them to respond, that they're going to lose. They're going to lose churches. They're going to lose houses. They're going to lose families. They're going to lose lives. And all of it has, has started to happen. And um, it's just to me the introduction into this to the next stage of the the, the coming of Christ. Honestly, and and but and, and it's just saying that this is the last push. You know, God is saying he needs us to actually go out and reach these people. You know, I always say, how often does the, the unbeliever, the lost, just walk into the church? 
It doesn't happen. The church, all that's in the church are, are, are mostly believers. And, and, and that's who we preach to every day, believers. That's who, who in the four walls, who we try to show up for, who we running around in circles, shouting everywhere, is believers. But what about the, the lost? Right. I had this I had this conversation earlier and my thing was we can't take for granted that people know certain things. You know what I'm saying? I had I was on, you know, I used to do and I'm start back doing it the um the singing. So I never forget I was like, you know, thank God for my relationship with God and I'm so I'm so thankful because me and God have a relationship that I can talk to him not a certain kind of way, but we're able to have, I can, I'm able to have a conversation with God, like God now, yeah. come on now, why are we doing such and such? And you know, most of the same, like, you don't question God, shut up, this is my relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then the lady came into my inbox and she said, hey, Valika, I heard you talking about your relationship with God. How do you get a relationship with God? And I was like, huh? Wow. Took for granted because she didn't know. You get what I'm saying? Right. Right. She did not know. And that's what like I was even telling Pastor earlier. Um, you know, we were talking about faith, faith, faith. And I said, it sounds great. It sounds faith sounds good. But some people don't understand no. depending on faith and having yeah. faith in God. Put your trust in God. Yeah, you don't lost your loved one. Put your trust in God. They don't know what that means. Like God, I'm gonna put my trust in God when He when He allowed this to happen. Now I'm angry and now I'm mad. But we got to have these conversations. Okay. Yeah. Now they angry. Now they mad. How do we, we we can't just tell them to put their faith in God when they're mad at God right now? Right. We got to build that trust back in God for them, or they may not even trust God or or have faith in God. You get what I'm saying? Right. So now we got to teach them. Well, we got to reel them back in. Then we got to teach them. Mm -hmm. I had a whole conversation. Me and my cousin was doing this. We didn't do a skit. He's a pastor too. But he knew what I was doing. So Mm -hmm. I was acting like a person that was in the world who hadn't even stepped in the church. Why y'all... why y'all beat up Eve so much about it? Why y'all beat up Eve and y'all ain't beating up Adam? You get what I'm saying? <laughs> right. He knew where I was going with this. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But then I had people, <laughs> church people saying, why you taking up for Eve? She was a hoe. What? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh you, you got that carnal mindset. You did not like, see, that's why folks do not come to church. Come to church. Exactly. Okay, you're judgmental saints. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's religious people. Religious people yeah. have been the downfall of of the church. Religion, period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I, I listen. I'm a firm believer that if if we don't get out there and and, and present to people the simplicity of, of Christ, because Christ in His walk was a simple walk. He won't know. You know, he he didn't preach a bunch of doctrine. He he came at the people in real. You know what I'm saying? Where Transparent they where they <laughs> were. And a lot of times, I think. We get so religious uh, or we get so caught up in, in our 30 years in the church that we forget, you know, where we came from. We forget that we needed somebody to yeah. break it down. And a lot, and to be honest with you, Felica, a lot of them 30 year veterans that that's in the church, they don't even understand the word. And that's, that's why, just being real. That's why those churches that you're talking about, the people that didn't make it, because if you had discernment to be able to hear from God in the midst of that situation, then they would have known. They needed to adjust and, and be, to right. help them to be able to transition by the leading of the Holy Spirit through this process. But a lot, a lot of people, honestly, they they they're religious, and and it's like I I use me as an example all the time. I grew up in the church, you know, for for, for a few, you know, I was Church of God in Christ, and I grew up. But when I grew up as a young man, I would hear things over and over again. You know, um, I give you an example. We would hear the, the, the Bible scripture. You know, the the race isn't given to the swift nor the battle to the strong, but then we say, but to the one who endures to the end. We always hear that. And I always thought that that was just a, a, a scripture. And, and it wasn't until later on in my life that I didn't realize that that's two different scriptures that people have put together. You know what I'm saying? And we, we go in and, and we, 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 we learn, we say what we heard all of our lives, but we, a lot of times we just do it for show. We lift our hands to certain things because everybody else lifting their hands. And then we grow up in life doing it. And now it's just an act instead of knowing why we do it and having understanding. But God tells us in all I get, get understanding. And that's, and that's what we lack in the church because of religion. We just do things out of, 
out of uh, you say religion. Come on here. Oh, uh, hey, I'm a, people don't might not like how I say it or what I say, but God it's gave me that. It's the truth. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and and the, and the and the unbeliever don't want nothing to do with it. I asked my cousin, um, and then and something else we said, I was like, okay. And, and we were like, like, like I said, I knew exactly, he knew exactly where I was coming. So I was mm-hmm. like, okay, I know that you're, I know that the Bible was saying that the, the husband is the head of the house and we should, and the woman should pretty much follow him. That's true. But I, t- I said, well, what if my husband is raggedy? What if he don't have a job? Should I follow him right on the hell? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's not being funny. Come on now. Right. Is, we got to be able to able to understand what we are reading. You know right. What I'm right. And, and, and the saints like, it doesn't matter, whatever, whatever. But that's the truth. Like, what if he like my ex, my ex husband, he ended up um not working, ended up on drugs real bad. He ended up and it, it took me forever to file for a divorce because in my mindset, you know, I'm supposed to divorce. I know you don't, but I didn't think God wanted me to be in a situation where it was pretty much verbal abuse. You know what I'm right. saying? Abuse. It's pretty much like he be gone for two whole weeks and money, like the, about to get kicked out. God didn't want that for me. You get what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> and, and what, I, what, what I had to really realize was, okay, God had to remind me. All right. So when you got in this situation with this husband, did you ask me? Ooh, that's it. That's it, Malika. That's it. No, God, I did not ask you. I didn't even have a relationship with you at the time. Right. So I didn't ask you. So I get it. I can leave. Because right. I didn't ask for permission anyway. That, that, listen, it's crazy. Yeah, that just, you just said that. Because we, we were just talking about this and... In our Bible study last, last night. night. Last wow. Night. wow. Last night, on, our, on our Bible study, the glass house, we were just talking about um, terms of divorce. And, and, we, and, and, you know, we had a lot of people coming in about that same specific subject. We was like, well, what's the reasons in the, that the word gives for divorce? And, they, you know, we read the scriptures and it says sexual immorality, adultery, desertion, and things of that nature. Oh, but man. then I said, you know, in all I get and get understanding, you know, well, they don't mention abuse. Well, come on now. We all know that abuse, that 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 if somebody is tearing you up mentally or physically, it's time you have to, it's time to go. Right. It's right. time to go. And right. and and you know what? I, I this is my second marriage. And I, you know, and then people were saying, Well, you was remarried, and I understand, you know, I was remarried, and, and my reason was for whatever. But I say this, like you, I didn't ask God about my first marriage. I was out in the world for one. But I didn't ask God about my first marriage. And because I didn't do that, you know, now now that I'm in the word of God, now that I understand, I operate differently. And, and, exactly. And, when you know better, you do better. Right. right. But, you know, pe- people always want to come at you or always want to dissect you and, and, and try, you know what I'm saying? And that's what saints, a lot of saints have always done. And they don't understand. It's just pushing people away. It's just pushing people it's away. It's pushing them away. It's pushing people away and and people do not understand. Church people are sometimes, not all. Let me just address it because I don't feel like responding back to your message. <laughs> but church people got to be more sensitive to people that come in. If they don't know, if they ask the question, be gentle. Or you can't sit here. I never did one Sunday. You can't. No, you can't sit here. Sister so-and-so. I'm waiting on mother so-and-so. Oh, mother wow. so-and-so never showed up. So guess what? I gave up my marketing seat. You can have my seat. Oh, I'm wow. so glad because that lady was getting ready to turn around in the church. Right? And what happened was she cried during the whole message. And then she tapped one of the ministers on their shoulder and said, could you please pray for me? Wow. I'm so thankful that she didn't leave because we don't know what that lady was dealing with. Right. Right? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So we got to be more sensitive to people's people, just period. You know what I'm saying? Right. Don't be nasty. Don't be this way. Cause sometimes I'm sorry, but church folks can be the worst, nasty, is judgmental, yeah. talking about everybody sells. You get what I'm saying? Yes. It, that, and you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. And I, that's one of the things that, you know, um, that we try to center our lives and our church around is being transparent about who we are, where we came from, right. the struggles we had, because 
how else is it that people are going to know how to be set free or how to, how they're going to overcome or how they're going to be delivered from situations if they don't, if, if nobody's telling them, because sometimes as believers, we can get so self-righteous and, um, you know, like my husband was saying, forget about where we came from. And then, you know, like you were saying, we're judging people and condemning them for where they are, but we have a past as well. We overcame something too. And how are they going to know if we don't tell them, we try to sit and act like everything's so perfect and, and, and everything's great and nothing's ever happened to us. And we just was born saved and holy sanctified and, 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 you know, and we've never been through anything, but we have to, because if we don't, we're going to lose people. And let's be really transparent. A lot of the, the people we, we, we're talking about, we have a past, should we have a present too? A lot of us have struggled. We're struggling with things right now. Right. And, 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 and it's crazy how we'll sit up there and try to hide our struggle. You know, right. we're dealing with stuff. Everyone's dealing with stuff. And, it, it, and, and what happens is if the believer can, can witness what you're dealing with at that time, that's the deliverance. You know what I'm saying? I always preach, you grow into your deliverance. Yeah. You know and you have to be honest. Like people don't even want to be honest. Okay. God, <laughs> God sees everything, right? right. And, and that's why I was like, even when I was telling pastor the other a couple of weeks ago, thank you for that message. Cause I stopped cussing. I ain't cussed in three days since you said that. Convict me. I want to be convicted. And I haven't cussed. <laughs> I have a cuss since then. So it was funny because I told him I said I had to do this uh podcast because one of the um one of my followers' mother had died and they was like, Hey, can you pray for me? And I'm like, Ooh, I know I'm gonna pray out loud to everyone. <laughs> so I did a podcast, I prayed for him. That was one of the top downloaded podcasts, and pastor <laughs> said, Lika, you pray? I said, Yeah, <laughs> I pray. It's like I'm, I've been delivered, thank God. So I don't <laughs> care. like I don't cuss no more than I'm praying. Like right. that's good, you know what I'm saying? So we have to be honest because you don't know who else is struggling with something. You get what I'm right. saying? And people are like Thomas, you know, when I said I cussed, and oh, she said, mm-hmm. yeah, right. I'm getting side eye and everything. Like I'm being honest. I'm being honest. Right. You know, I'm too. Don't even play with me like that. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm honest. I'm honest enough to say the things I'm saying because let me tell you, I never forget one time I went live. I went Facebook live and I told them, I said, I was cussing so bad the other day because I was whatever. And I said, God had to show me the reason why you were cussing. You don't start back cussing and acting a fool is because you're so far from me right now. You get what I'm saying? The further you get away from God, you got room to do destructive things. So, you get them right. so then I came back to the audience and I said, I had to read this scripture and this scripture said A, B, and C. I had to read that and this said this and that. So I thought after that Facebook Live, I thought they were going to judge me and drag me. They were right. tagging their friends and saying, hey, she does the same. She don't went through the same thing. And this is how she got over. Oh, wow. She was doing this. I just did that last week and she did A, B, and C. So in my transparency and my honesty, I was able to help save somebody else from doing the exact same thing that people lie about then claim they do not do stop being so judgmental and stop acting like you're on a high horse and come back down here and help get some of these people saved that's what's going to happen and see and these people don't realize that at the end of your race when you finish running this race and you go before the Lord and stand there and it says it in the word he's going to say get away because I don't even recognize who you are so often we're trying to disguise our best yeah. because we want to look good in front of everybody else and it becomes a lifestyle for us. And now we feel it's okay. We, 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 there's no more conviction. There's no more anything. And now we live in a life thinking that we're okay because of how we feel that we look in front of people, not realizing it ain't about how you look in front of the people, right. but about how we look in front of God. Right. And now he's going to he's turn away. From it. Hey, I don't even know you. Yeah, I had a, a similar situation like you were saying, but mom was um, operating in the spirit of bitterness. Now, I'm first lady, and I didn't even really realize I was operating in the spirit of bitterness. But my husband being my pastor, you know, when I, I can't remember what the sermon series was at that time, but it convicted me. And I had to repent. And, you know, we were on, on uh, live on Bible study, and I admitted, I said, listen, 
I struggled with, you know, the, the spirit of offense and, and bitterness. And and I may have been smiling to everybody else, but then I was just bitter and angry when I came home, you right. know, and was angry with my family and just and, and didn't even realize that I was doing this. And so I had to repent and say, Lord, forgive me and, and you know, allow God to show me, OK, what's going on with me to co- that's causing me to, you know, respond and react this way. And then I had people reach out to me like, oh, my God, you know, you're bitter. Well, I was going through this and I've been going through that, you know, some of the same things I was going through. And so many people, it's hard to relate. People can't relate. You know, back in the day, really, I don't know if you used to do this or used to say this. But back in the day, we used to uh, in the streets, we used to say real recognize real. You know, game recognize game, shawty. Right, and game recognize game. <laughs> so you know, it, it is true. People recognize real. Yeah, and, and, and people recognize fake. Mm-hmm. And, and and unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there faking it, and people see right through it. And 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 it's and it's turning people. It's making people just have a bad taste in their mouth. But you know, when when I came into ministry, I made a promise to God, and and that promise was that I don't care no matter what, I'm gonna let people know where I'm at and where I come from because it isn't and it isn't just about me, like you said earlier. It's about everyone else that's gonna be impacted by me and my right. life and my walk and, mm-hmm. and and my truthfulness and honesty. Mm-hmm. It's all about integrity, and, and, and that's that's what it's about integrity. So it's all about integrity. It's been fun talking to y'all. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite y'all back again. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. <laughs> but this has been real. Like seriously, I've had a good time with y'all. I really Thank you. We don't wait for one conversation to another one. See, right. that's a bad mood. I was just stop telling people this is the topic we're gonna talk about. So, <laughs> it, but it's it shifted to something even bigger. Like yeah. I really enjoyed that. Right. So really quick, if you don't mind, let people know how they can follow Pastor Thomas and Lady Crystal. Well, you can follow us on, um, we have a Facebook page, which is, of course, Breakthrough Worship Center of Hope. Um, also, I encourage everybody to go join. We have a private page called the, called the Glass House. And that's just a page that's where- a group or private? It's a, it's a private group. So okay. you have to, you know, you just put in a request that you want to join. Okay. Um, because what it is, it's about, it's a bunch of people that's just transparent. That's why we call it the glass house. I so we have, these, we have these conversations. Um, we go live with them um, in within the group, and uh, we just talk about things. We just talk about what 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 people might look at us bad for talking about, and we we are just real transparent. So that's called the glass house. You'll see my wife and I picture on that one. Um, Instagram, um, you can follow us at, at at bwcoh on Instagram. I believe that's it, right? So. And it's called um, it's hashtag experience real love, um, and and YouTube we also on YouTube also um, the same thing Breakthrough Worship Center of Hope. Um, that's all we're on right now. Hopefully we'll expand further. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for jo- joining the Valika B Project. Thank you so much, Facebook, uh, Instagram, podcast radio and whoever i got so many families but i love all of y'all thank you guys so much for joining this year girl. You for having us. we will see you next time well that concludes this episode of the valika b project with your host valika b until next time we meet be blessed the valika b project